We are going to, to, to listen to our colleague from the IEA, Mr. Stefano Monti, who is the section head of NPTDS. NPTDS is Nuclear Power Technology Development Section. Uh, about nuclear power technology evolution. So we will have the excellent opportunity to get into this uh, current state of nuclear power on its technological side. I tried a little bit to tell you something about the political side, but very carefully, because one has to be careful with politics, because politics are interpreted differently in different parts of the world. But uh, let's listen to, 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 to Mr. Monti on the, on the technology part. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Probably because of this. Good. So, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, really a pleasure to be here with, with you. I'm presenting, uh, well, I have three lectures actually during uh, the week. One is a general one on nuclear power technology evolution. And let me start immediately with a disclaimer. Actually, in the evolution, there should be also included uh, the fuel, the fuel cycle, the technology, etc. But you know, I'm a nuclear engineer, and all the nuclear engineers are basically very linked to nuclear power plant. So we'll see the, the evolution of nuclear power technology, actually, through the evolution of the nuclear power plant which actually is only a piece of the whole uh, cake, because we should also talk about uh, the evolution in the fuel, the evolution in the fuel cycle, and so on, and the materials, etc. But for that, for that uh, next time, you should also involve uh, materialists or uh, chemical people, and chem uh, people uh, actually uh, skilled in, in chemistry and in materials, and, and so on and so forth. So when, when, when possible, I will also touch uh, the associated fuel and fuel cycle, but very, very lightly. Um, the second um, disclaimer that uh, I was here uh, during uh, the, uh, the previous uh, lecture, uh, well, some overlap are, are really unavoidable, and I hope that you don't mind. Uh, uh, the other side, this is the first uh, uh, day, and uh, if we repeat uh, some basic uh, concept, uh, which should, uh, I mean, be fixed in your mind, it's not, it's not bad, okay? I hope that at least will not be in contradiction. So <laughs> this is some, the concepts are more or less the same uh, and uh, even with a with different uh, approach. So say that um, I prepared for today a um, presentation based on these four or five uh, lines. Well, first of all, basic uh, nuclear uh, concept. Here, of course, we have some overlapping with the, the previous uh, one. Okay? And that... I mean, specifically, the, the problem, I mean, we, we will see the evolution of the reactor even through their classification. I will explain to you shortly why the classification actually of the, re the reactor is somehow related also to their evolution. Then some status, status and prospect of nuclear power in the world. Eh? If we have to put things in perspective in the timeline, well, we should uh, see what is the status today and then what is the the uh, forecast for the nuclear power uh, deployment in the world. And then the evolution through the different uh, type of reactors, so water-cooled uh, reactor, both the current nuclear power plant and the so-called evolutionary uh, reactors. Um, the, let's say, the uh, transition system between uh, the current uh, technology and the future technology, which is nowadays uh, is represented by the so-called small, medium size or modular uh, reactor. I hope that you have heard about uh, this particular reactor technology. And then we, we jump uh, very quickly to the innovative nuclear energy system that someone who was saying that we should uh, talk about a revolution in nuclear power. Well, these innovative uh, reactors are also uh, uh, called uh, I mean, just in contraposition with the evolution, they are called the revolutionary uh, uh, reactor because they are really very different, uh, I mean, at least in, in some part of the technology with respect to the current reactor. Part of evolution is also the, the fact that the nuclear power is not only used for electricity production, but also for, for, is, for instance, uh, cogeneration and other industrial applications. So 
I will also touch briefly, I have just a few slides, at least to introduce the, the topic, which is not specific of this nuclear energy management. So I took the occasion to also introduce uh, some slides regarding uh, this different uh, uh, use of nuclear uh, power with respect to what is commonly used for electricity uh, production. Good. So, first of all, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the main drivers. My, I mean, the, the previous lecture already uh, talked about uh, that. The drivers, I talk about the drivers because the drivers are the same since ever. Okay, the main motivation to adopt nuclear power for, um, for a country are, are always the same. Security of energy uh, supply, okay? the, the fact is that uh, since ever, I mean, uh, the, the, the fuel price are volatile, okay? In this moment, uh, are very low, that's true, okay? Which make, of course, uh, some, pose some difficulties for nuclear power to be, to be competitive. But as a matter of fact is that if we look back, okay, there are very volatile uh, fuel, uh, fossil fuel uh, prices. And of course, uh, this has immediate, uh, I mean, impact on the economy of the countries which are heavily based on, on, this, uh, uh, on this fossil fuel. Well, demand for clean energy, even that is there since ever, even, I mean, since the beginning of the, of the nuclear power era. Maybe what is new is the fact that uh, with nuclear power, we can address uh, the very problem in this moment, is, I mean, more sensitive problem for, for the population, the question to mitigate uh, climate change. Well, I didn't put there in the slide because, uh, as I said before, we should avoid political issues in this context. But consider that all these points, at least the, the, the first two points, uh, have also a number of political implications. Okay? And this is true since ever. I remember there was a famous uh, entrepreneur in, in, in our country. Uh, I, I come from Italy, which is a disaster from the uh, <laughs> deployment of nuclear power. should not be considered as an example. But as the beginning, it was a very good example. There was a, a guy who was uh, the, 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 the CEO of ENI. ENI is our major uh, uh, gas supplier enterprise, actually, the, 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 the biggest enterprise uh, in Italy, that in the 50s, uh, even if he was the guy, I mean, buying the gas and, and the oil for the country and then distributed in the country, say, we are too much heavily rely on a very unstable part of the world. Okay? We should introduce a new uh, uh, energy sources which somehow allow us to get rid of these volatile prices, of this uh, political crisis, even a world which sometimes explode in some part of the, of the world. So let me also stress uh, that uh, nuclear power, since ever, has also addressed this political issue. And it's not a minor one, above all, if you consider in this moment uh, how, let's say, the instability, at least, we can say that uh, is, I mean, we are living in this moment uh, in some part of the world and which have uh, also an impact uh, from the uh, energy production viewpoint and the, the, the uh, energy security viewpoint. But, but there is, of course, uh, something to pay for that, okay? Okay, very good, nuclear power, but nuclear power is a unique, uh, already concept which has been already stressed. Uh, it requires uh, all of that, okay? Or at least all of these are requirements for a, for a, for a country to, to go nuclear. First of all, there should be a long-term commitment by the government. Even in states in which, uh, I mean, the energy sector and the electricity sector is based on um, liberalized energy market, uh, even in this case. So at least it means that in principle, nuclear should, uh, should not be subsidized or should not be helped by the state. Despite of that, uh, there must be anyway a big commitment from the government, okay? Because, uh, for instance, there are a number of associated uh, issues in going uh, nuclear, 
that even if you are not the owner of the plant, but you are the state, you have to support, first of all, of course, education and training of, of, of people. Okay? People have to be educated. They, they should acquire a, a safety culture without touching the question, of course, of the nuclear waste management, management which means commitment for hundreds of years. And actually, it's the second part, long-term nuclear waste uh, management. The third, the third point is a capital-intensive in, in investment. We know that is, uh, in this moment, also the weak point of nuclear power. We have to, uh, to admit that. Nuclear power, at least nowadays, is characterized by the fact that, uh, I mean, the, 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 the cost of a kilowatt hour is heavily depending on the cost of the, of the reactor, okay, of, the, of the technology itself. Okay, the fuel represents only 10, 15 percent. So it means uh, that uh, we have to invest a lot of money in the moment in which we start the, the, uh, the, uh, the nuclear uh, program. It will take a, a while even to build uh, the reactor, minimum five, six, and we have seen, unfortunately, that for some first of a kind uh, uh, reactor, even 10 years to be built, which means that there should be a, a context, an environment, in which there, there should be investor able to provide a lot of money. Uh, a, nuclear power a nuclear power program is in the, the, the cost is the order of 10 billion euros, just to, to, to give a, a figure of merit. Okay? It gives your 10, 10 uh, billion uh, uh, euro, and it will start getting back of this money only in 10 years from now. This means capital in, in, in tax investment, and it is an issue. Okay. Above all, in, in the current, in a, in a liberalized energy market, to find a private investor, well, in the position to put at risk such a lot of money, okay, with a return from an investment, so long-term investment, is a problem. Is a clear problem, and maybe one of the triggering factors that have promoted the technology of SMR that we will, we will explain uh, later on. Well, trained human resources. Well, you are an example. Okay, there is a non-nuclear without, I mean, a, a, a big investment on very well-trained human resource, resources. Please consider that uh, the IA has more or less uh, um, evaluated uh, how many years uh, we need to have a real expert in nuclear safety, both in, at the level of the operator or a level of the regulatory body of a, or a technical support organization. After education, after university, after being graduated, it takes at least 15 years to get really a real expert in nuclear safety. So just this only element clearly demonstrates the, the, I mean, the, the, really the big commitment of the country what does it mean in terms of education and training of human resources? Is a commitment, and of course, also somehow, uh, I mean, uh, something to be paid by the, the country. But please consider that there are also a number of, uh, let's say, connected good things. Because if you, I mean, nuclear really requires to increase the level of education of a country. Okay? And we're not talking about only nuclear engineer. As I said before, actually, nuclear engineer represent only 10, 20 percent of the, of the workers that you need for a nuclear power program. Then you need mechanical engineer, you need electrical engineer, you, 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 you need very specialized uh, uh, technical uh, personnel. This means creating, I mean, this is required a lot of effort from the education and training viewpoint. It, it, creates education in the whole uh, country. It really raises okay, the level of education in the country. This is one of the benefits that normally is not really stressed, but is very important. Because it's not only the fact that you generate uh, a base load uh, energy at an affordable price, it's also the fact that uh, you have uh, somehow spread out the, 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 the need of education in many other uh, sectors. And there are other economical sectors which benefit of what the, the state have done for, for, to support the nuclear power program. 
the other very, uh, of course, the particular things is the, I mean, the high level of safety and, and security. Also, the aspect of security has been touched by, by the previous uh, lecture. There is a problem of control, control of nuclear materials. It's a matter of fact that you don't have this issue with another energy. So, so it's really unique of the, of the technology. And we know we have a problem with public uh, perception. I think that here uh, uh, the nuclear sector should really put a lot of emphasis and uh, effort. It's not only the question to educate, uh, I mean, grown up people, uh, or, uh, people that are already part of the society. I think uh, that there should be really a basic education, not only on nuclear, on energy and, uh, and the environment at large. Even, again, I can put forward uh, an example uh, of my, in my country, which is considered a developed country. We are the third economy in, in Europe. Well, I'm a biker. So since I'm a mountain biker, every, every Sunday and Saturday I go out with a group of bikers. And in the group of bikers, there is any kind of person. Okay? There, are, there are doctors, but there are also workers. There are engineers. There are everyone. It's a group of bikers. I mean, we enjoy the fact that we share this, uh, this passion for the bike. So I mean, sometimes I want to test uh, their level of education in general on technical matters. And I ask it. A doctor, medical doctor. Okay, maybe it was not uh, the, the best of the words. In your view, what is uh, the 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 uh, primary energy source still used at large nowadays? Okay, what is the the, the, the main energy sources? Uh, you, in electricity, uh, uh, fuel for for your car, and so on and so forth. What is still the, nowadays uh, the, the the most used the primary energy source? The reply was electricity. Okay, electricity. And this is a doctor. Okay? So I think that we have a problem here. The problem is that it's not the nuclear. It's the, the basis, uh, the fundamental basis of energy and technology. If I ask uh, uh, someone in my country to say something about our father Dante, they know, they, they can even say something about the Divina Commedia. But if I ask what is the, the most important primary energy source, are people still thinking that electricity is a primary energy source? Okay, so a clear public perception comes also by this situation, which is, of course, has a number of consequences in nuclear, but is really pervasive in, in many countries, even in developed uh, countries. Say that, let's come to, to the main topic of, uh, of this uh, lecture, uh, starting with some basic nuclear concepts, which are functional then to introduce the question of reactor classification and then uh, the evolution. So first of all, this is a, a, I don't know exactly what is the level of, uh, of the knowledge of these people, because you, you are considered to be in the future manager of nuclear energy, so not, not necessarily, I mean, uh, subject matter experts, but I suppose that you know more or less what is this guy. Okay, so that a any type of nuclear power plant, okay, is basically composed of two main uh, pieces. One is the nuclear steam supply system, which is also called the nuclear island, which is there to pr produce any uh, as any other uh, uh, energy plant for increased production is there to produce. Uh, main steam. This main steam goes to this part of the plant, which is called the balance of, of plant. The steam uh, uh, drives a uh, turbine uh, generator and produces electricity to, to, to the grid. Okay? The scheme is like any other I mean, typical energy uh, plant. And then also, I mean, produce heat that in this case is dumped into the heat sink, but as we, can, we will see, we can also use it. Then, of course, uh, this uh, steam, when it's at, at uh, low enthalpy, has to be condensed in a, conden in a condenser and then comes back to the nuclear island as uh, uh, liquid water, part of the feed water, which, which feeds the sea. So all the systems that we will discuss in this day more or less respect this uh, layout with many, many different uh, options, uh, of course. Another categorization is for neutron, nuclear fission. Well, I give for granted that you know what is nuclear fission. 
Okay, so we have a big, uh, uh, I mean, a large categorization between a thermal reactor and fast uh, uh, reactors. Thermal reactors, of course, you have to slow down uh, the neutrons in order to, I mean, be good to uh, 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 hit uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fissile material and have uh, a fission. The good news for, for there are two positive aspects in a thermal uh, reactor. The first, first, first of all, that there is a large fraction of delayed neutrons. You know what are the delayed neutrons? If someone doesn't have this basic uh, principle, please uh, raise your hand. So they have a large fraction of delayed uh, uh, neutrons, which is, is very grasping for the reactor uh, period. So it, it really helps in control the reactivity of the system. And the other good point is that, as you can see from uh, this graph, which is nothing than, uh, yeah, than uh, the uh, cross-section, uh, fission uh, cross-section um, versus uh, the energy, the, the, the cross-section uh, uh, of fission in a, thermal, in a thermal spectrum are very high, much higher than in a, in a fast uh, uh, reactor. And so the flux is in the order of 10 to the 13, 10 to the 14 newton per square centimeter per, per second. Fast reactor, of course, there is no moderator because uh, we use a, new, a high energy neutron underneath uh, uh, fission. Uh, the point is that they have a small fraction of delayed uh, neutron fraction. So, of course, uh, even the system is more sensitive to the change of power, okay? So there are more rapid uh, rate of power change in the fast reactor with, uh, with respect to the thermal reactor. And, as we can see here, the, for instance, the uranium-235 fission cross-section is much lower than in a thermal spectrum, which is uh, here. And of course, as a consequence, we need, the, well, what we need, well, the power, what is the power? Power is, the power of the reactor is very, it's very simple. Uh, the product of the, the microscopic section times the number of, uh, I mean, per cubic centimeter of uh, fissile isotopes times the, the, uh, the flux. Okay, so we have three parameters with, to play to have such a, a certain level of, of, of power. In principle, if, for instance, the, the, the sigma, the, the micro, microscopic cross-section is 10 times less in a fast reactor than in a thermal reactor, it means that more or less in a, in a, in a fast reactor will have a, a neutron flux, which is a 10 times than in a thermal reactor. There is also another, another parameter, the third one, which is the, the density uh, of, of uh, the nuclides. And so we can, of course, also play with the enrichment. In, in fact, uh, normally a fast reactor has an enrichment which is higher than a, a, in, in a thermal reactor. Okay, another cat categorization is also also based, let's say, on the uh, the neutron, the physics of the of the system. It's the fact that uh, unless you have a fertile free uh, system, uh, every system has some fertile, for instance, uh, uranium thirty eight, uh, typically. So, of course, uh, since there are neutrons and there is uh, the usual uh, decay reaction, we can generate uh, other fissile material from the fertile material. And so we have defined the conversion ratio, which is the rate at which new fissile material is being created with respect to the one which has been loaded and burned. Okay? It's a very simple uh, uh, um, uh, definition with a number of consequences. In normally, in so-called light water reactor or uh, uh, heavy water cooled uh, and, and moderated reactor in gas reactor, this ratio is less than one. So it means that we destroy more fissile material than the one that uh, we, we generate uh, for conversion. And so this ratio is called, uh, the system is called the converter. In some reactors, and tomorrow we'll see why, the ratio may be even uh, greater than, than one even much greater than one. It's possible even to design, design for instance, a fast reactor even con with conversion ratio 1.5, 1.6. In, in such a case, the system is called breeder because it breeds fissile material and it produces more fissile material than the one part in the system. Another categorization which is very useful 
is bicoolant. Uh, actually, this is considered the most, uh, I mean, common categorization of Lucre uh, uh, reactor. And I like this graph because uh, it gives not only the possible option of the coolant, but also the consequences in terms of operation. So we have uh, four main coolants, which are water cooled. Okay. What, so the water. The, the coolant is water, water cooled reactors. Then we have gas cooled reactors, then metal cooled reactors, and molten salt cooled uh, reactors. And because of the thermodynamic property of this, uh, of this uh, coolant, in the case of water cooled reactor, we have temperature, the, the, the operating temperature of the reactor are around 250, 300 degrees C is the output temperature. But in order to withstand with this temperature, we need a very high pressure. In the case of gas-cooled reactor, the temperature can be much higher in the order of 700 and in the future also 1,000 degree uh, C. But even here, we need a high pressure. In the case of metal-cooled uh, reactor, we can reach uh, uh, output temperature of the order of 500, 600 degrees C. And because of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the metals, they have a very uh, high um, boiling point, uh, we can keep the system at atmospheric pressure. In the case of molten salt cooled reactor, we may, may build a reactor with a very high uh, uh, output temperature and operating, even in this case, at atmospheric pressure. So if we combine all these uh, different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, features, and we also consider the possible fuel which can be uh, used in a reactor, we generate the multiplicity of the different uh, reactor option. And here you can see, for instance, if we have few, as fuel, uh, 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 low enriched uranium or uranium plutonium oxide, and we use water as a moderator and also as a coolant. This generated two different types of, of reactor, which are the pressurized water cooled reactor with this version BBR developed uh, in Russia, and the boiling water cooled reactor. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to use a natural uranium, in, su in such a case, you know, that we should enrich not the fuel, but the, the, uh, the moderator. So we use a heavy water. Uh, uh, as a moderator. There are concepts using uh, also, the, the coolant is also uh, heavy water, or maybe also light water. And in such a case, we generate uh, the case of the pressurized heavy water reactor. Um, the case, let's take also, again, the case of LU or MOX with the graphite as moderator and uh, uh, gas, for instance, as a coolant. It generates the case of a gas-cooled uh, uh, reactor. If we have graphite as moderator and uh, light water as coolant, there is the very case of RBMK, um, which is very known because of the Chernobyl accident. And finally, if we don't have any moderator, we have a fast reactor, a typical uh, fast reactor is a liquid metal cooled uh, fast reactor. There are, we can also use uh, uh, um, molten salt uh, uh, both in as thermal and uh, both in thermal and in fast spectrum. For all of them, of course, uh, we'll investigate a little bit more with the lecture tomorrow, which one are devoted one to the different uh, water cooled technology and another one on liquid metal cooled fast reactor. Okay. But the, 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 the most common uh, classification of, of reactor is according to their generation. So when they were developed and then deployed for the first time. This is another graph which was already um, shown by, by the previous lecture. Uh, the early prototypes of nuclear power plant uh, uh, comes back to the, to the 50s and were built and operated between the 50s and also the, and, and the 90s. Then, on the basis of the experience uh, gathered during uh, the operation of this early prototype, large-scale power sta station were developed, and they represent the current uh, fleet. It's called the current fleet, but also generation two reactors. 
Then, on the basis of the experience gathered on the operation of these reactors, and also, why not, the lesson learned from some big uh, accident like the uh, Three Mile Island in the US and the Chernobyl uh, accident in the former Soviet Union, there was another class of uh, uh, reactor which is heavily based actually on the experience of the generation two because the technology is more or less the same. Uh, most of them are, again, water-cooled reactor, which are called evolutionary or even advanced passive design. Passive because they have introduced the concept of passive, in particular safety system, in particular to remove the decay heat from uh, the, uh, the reactor. It means safety system that, uh, I mean, in a simplified way, they don't require the intervention, the actuation of active system or the intervention of the operator. They are based on physical, natural phenomena, okay? Like uh, gravity, like evaporation, condensation, and so on and so forth. So there are uh, 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 physical phenomena which are there, natural results, and they are heavily based on passive safety system. These are reactors which are already, uh, uh, some of them are already in operation, other are, other are under licensing, other uh, are even under construction. Uh, after this generation, we have the so-called generation four, uh, the generation four reactors, which we, we have revolutionary uh, design, and there are reactors which are at the moment under development, let's say, design, sometimes also advanced the design, but none of them is in, in operation and also under uh, construction. They are supposed to be put in, the first of a kind of this reactor is supposed to be put in operation, let's say, in the next uh, two decades. It's very difficult in this even economic and political context uh, to take, I mean, a real commitment when this uh, reactor will be really uh, uh, available at least as a first of a kind. For sure, they may represent uh, an important part of the fleet of the nuclear power plant in the world only in the second half of this century. Okay? Please consider that whatever is, it, this was true also for the, the previous uh, reactors. To have a fleet is a very long, long process. Okay? It's not possible to um, uh, develop, a new, above all, a new technology, jumping immediately to the industrial reactor. Okay? Actually, this was true also at the very, uh, uh, the very early phase of the nuclear power era. We started with prototypes. And before the prototypes, there were experimental and demonstration plans. Because first of all, you have to prove that the technology stick together, the technology works. Okay? Then, with the demo plant, they are also to, to demonstrate that you, have, uh, you are able to generate net electricity in an affordable way. Then you have a prototype, this one, which are already connected to the grid, but still you need to, to, uh, 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 to collect the lesson learned from their operation. And only, only after the prototype, you have the first of a, of a, of a kind, of the real industrial size, the reactor, and then the fleet. Okay? All of that, if you consider this timeline, takes more or less half a century. Eh? Okay? You have these numbers. I mean, it's important. Because, so when people propose, I, I'm, I'm a fast reactor guy, so I've been working on fast reactors since the beginning of my, of my career. But I have to be, to be honest, okay, when they say, when a fast reactor will really represent, uh, I mean, a large fraction of the, the current fleet. I repeat myself, not before the, the, the second half of this uh, century, at best. Why? Because if we consider the generation four fast reactor, we are, we are at the level of the uh, 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 design, okay? Sometimes also advanced design. Some of the fast reactor technology have been already proved. Okay? So for some fast reactors, particularly the sodium-cooled fast reactor, for which we have already 400 reactor year of, of operation, we can say that most probably we don't need the demonstration plan. We can jump from the demo plant to the prototype. Okay? okay, so let's have a prototype, let's say, is under design. In this moment, that it will be 
operated, I mean, under commissioning, not before 15 years from now, because they are at the conceptual design, and there, there is the detailed design, and so on and so forth. So, and then, and then construction, okay? And then they have to be operated, okay, in order to gather information on the operation of this kind of reactor and the associated fuel and, and fuel side, which means other 20 years. So we will have the real industrial size Gen 4 fast reactor not before that to the mid of this century. And as a consequence, the fleet will be, I mean, they will be able to replace the current fleet of light work to reactor only in the second half of the, of the century. And let me open, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enthusiastic of, of nuclear fusion. Okay, first of all, because from the scientific viewpoint, it's a big uh, challenge, okay, to recreate, I mean, plasma at the sun condition on the Earth is a, is, a, is a real, very fascinating thing. But let me see, as, as, a, as a technical person, that uh, just to propose that fusion can really contribute significantly to the electricity production of this center is a dream. Even, even supposing that that uh, uh, ITER, you know, the one, the, the ITER, is before is an experimental plan, okay? So if we consider the step that we have uh, uh, talk about, about the fusion, so experimental plan, demonstrator, prototype, first of a kind, we are, we are encountering a lot of difficulties in building the first experimental fusion plant that at best will generate the first uh, they call fake plasma uh, in, mid, uh, 20, in 2025, okay? So there will be the real plasma only in 2035, and they will uh, try to collect the experience uh, only in the first half of this century at best. So it's not credible that fusion will contribute significantly, I mean, to the electricity production of this century, maybe in the next century, even supposing that they are now respecting their roadmap, which was not the case so far as also mentioned by, by Jan. This is important because uh, one should be a realistic. You are future manager of nuclear energy. I mean, we have to be very realistic and base our knowledge and, our, and, and also our belief, let me say, on real things, not on wishful thinking. Otherwise, we risk to take a big, big risk. Okay? And we have to rely on reactors which are proved and uh, have a significant uh, uh, operation in order to demonstrate that they are safe, safe and affordable from the economic viewpoint. Please, please. Yeah. Good point. Um, when I talk about fast reactor, I say, well, there is a particular technology of fast reactor, which is the sodium cooled fast reactor, for which we have already 400 reactor year of operation. Okay, how we collected this year, for instance, through the operation of uh, uh, Rhapsody, Phoenix, Super Phoenix, uh, K, uh, etc., etc., in Europe. And then, of course, uh, BN 600, BN 350 in, in, the, in the current Kazakhstan, and then now BN 800, and then and then so what happened in Japan, etc. All this uh, uh, react operation allows most properly to jump the phase of the experimental plan and the demonstrator. Why? Because the technology, the basic technology, how to design, construct, and operate a sodium food fast reactor is already there with a significant operational experience. Significant and comparable, anyway, with the operational experience of the current water cooled reactor, which is, which is almost a 16,000 reactor here. But it's significant, so for sure we cannot jump to the, to immediately to the industrial plant. Okay? But it's so significant that we can try to design now a prototype. So something which is already of a power 
I mean, uh, uh, capacity relevant from the industrial viewpoint. The, the, the reactor and the Gen 4 sodium cooled fast reactor under consideration at this moment, they have a power in the range of five or 600 megawatt electrical, which is already considered by the end just a, a medium sized uh, reactor, electrical, eh? not, not, not uh, thermal. Okay? And then on the basis of the, uh, the lesser learning, the operation, then most probably we can uh, already build the, the first of a kind and then to have the fleet. Uh, but again, if you look at the, uh, the time of frame, we are talking about uh, that a considerable number of fast reactors will be in operation again, not before the second half of the, of the, of the if there will be a big commitment, in particular also by the state, and not only by the, the private sector, in going ahead with the design, construction, and operation of this reactor. It is true that the fast reactor have been already operated, but consider that the reactor, the sodium cooled fast reactors that we are talking about in this moment are not a, any kind of sodium cooled fast reactor. Let me also uh, remember that the, the first uh, significant production of electricity was by sodium cooled fast reactor. You know that? Some lamps were switched off with, on with the, with the sodium cooled, the, the experimental breeder reactor in the US. Okay? So, of course, uh, we are able to design a sodium fast reactor and also to operate. But please be careful, because we are not talking about only the reactor in itself, but the reactor with the requirements of this revolutionary design. And one of the basic uh, uh, requirements is to address the so-called sustainability. Okay? Sustainability, in, in case of, of, of nuclear power, Translating the fact that, that uh, I have to make the best uh, use of the natural resources, and in the meantime, uh, minimize the uh, the um, the burden of the high-level waste, and uh, possibly even make them more sustainable from the economic viewpoint. In which, in this problem, at least in some part of the world, there is a kind of problem. Okay. So if you put together these uh, three main requirements and you transform that in terms of technology, what have to do to develop in order to, to address these uh, three, that, uh, three points which at the moment are wishful thinking, okay? we don't have industrial demonstration of that. Okay? So when we say, for instance, that we have to, to uh, uh, use for that, we need advanced fuel. Okay, advanced fuel, that is, first, first of all, it should be mixed with uranium-plutonium uh, fuel. Otherwise, we're the, the, uh, how to uh, operate a, a fast reactor properly in a closed fuel cycle. Why not also burning the minor actinides? And in this moment, we have even difficulties to, to rely on a stable matrix able to host the minor actinides. And then in a fuel cycle, which is closed, but not, say, ah, closed fuel cycle are already in operation. Well, some light water reactor, for instance, in France, are partially loaded with uranium plutonium oxide. And this uranium plutonium oxide is mono recycled, only one turn in the, uh, the, the reactor, in, in, in the fuel cycle, okay? Only once. When we talk about a fast reactor, we talk about a, a reactor, first of all, which uh, uses uh, advanced uh, 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 minor actinide base uh, uh, um, uh, fuel in order to reduce the burden on the geological disposal. Then we are, there are operated in a closed fuel cycle with multi-recycling. Okay? We have to recycle more than, even, yeah, well, we will talk about what you wanted to have as a, as a final stream. The number of cycles depends on what you wanted to have as a final stream. Okay? And for instance, for that, you need fuel cycle and fuel, ci fuel, and fuel cycle facilities that in this moment they don't exist. Okay? So you understand it's not a, a fast reactor, it's a very specific fast reactor. And on top of that, it should be also competitive with the, let's say, at least the current reactors without saying that actually should be competitive even with, uh, I don't know, with fossil fuel, okay? Well, the point is, you know why in Europe uh, we abandoned this uh, technology? Because EDF safe is not affordable, okay? Let me, let, let me, 
okay, Super Phoenix was closed even for political reasons. But after uh, Super Phoenix, EDF uh, asked the fast reactor community of Europe, are you able to design a reactor with a comparable investment cost, capital cost, to the current, uh, at that time, Gen 2 reactor? At that time, in Europe, we had a very skilled reactor, fast reactor community, which is not the case nowadays. I mean, only in Italy, there were two, 3,000 people working on fast reactor. There was one uh, of that. Nowadays, in, in Italy, we have, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 persons that maybe they are still skilled in fast reactor. In, in Astrid, the prototype of the French prototype, there are 600 people working on Astrid. At that time, in France, they have 10,000 people working on, on fast reactor. So at that time, okay, EDF asked to design a fa sodium cool fast reactor with a capital investment co comparable to the light water. They were not able to do it at that time. So the, the third challenge is this one. It's not only to complete, to have a complete closed fuel cycle, but also to have a reactor which is compatible with the current light water reactor. Russians, they, they claim uh, that uh, their BN 1200, you know that they are operating the BN 800. Now they claim that they are designing a BN 1200, which will have a, 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 um, a um, cost of the investment comparable with their BVR uh, 1200. Well, when they will show the design, I will believe. <laughs> okay. At the moment, I think that is still a big uh, challenge. Please, please. Very good. So that, for instance, we can, uh, let's say, relax okay, the requirements of the geological repository. Okay? But how much the, 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 uh, the back end impact the kilowatt hour, we know that. Okay. It's 15, 10 percent. So 15, 20 percent. It depends on the fuel cycle that you, you, you adopt. Okay. So for sure, in any case, even with the fast reactor, we know that we need the geological repose. So you don't eliminate this geological repose. You can relax the. the and we'll see how uh, in, in one of the, of the lecture. But you still need this geological repose. Maybe in a country, let's say in the US. Okay. If we really will have one day a fleet of fast reactors, instead of needing over the time two geological depositories, we need maybe only one. It's a, it's, a, it's a breakthrough. If you consider that they are still there to try to license a geological repository after 40 years, of course, to have to license one geological repository instead of two is really is not proportional. Right? Okay. So it's a, a clear uh, uh, break, breakthrough. But in terms of uh, cost of a kilowatt hour and also the, the problem, the financial issue, eh? to have a lot of money to invest now, to have revenue only in 10, 15 years, is still a big uh, challenge. Which means uh, that uh, most of the, the few countries which still pursue the, the fast reactor technology, they do, mo I mean, most of the time for strategic reason more than for economical uh, reason. Then we'll see. In the future, of course, with the advance of the technology, the, the, the fast reactor can be really competitive with the current. Uh, but it takes a time, decades, to make it happen. OK, just uh, quickly, uh, just because it is in my slides, uh, but before copy and paste, this is very nice. In my view, it's very nice. It's the best uh, classification of reactors that I have seen in my life. Uh, because it's like, you know, it's a, the film, so it's like a tree. And we start with Fermi and Gilles Curie, and then we have the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, and fourth with this three with the branches, which are larger, more and, and more. So in my view, it's very nice. It's also uh, linked to the main event, like for instance, in 1973, that we had uh, this big derivative because of the first oil shock in 1973. And then there was uh, some, uh, I mean, how to say, stagnation because of Chernobyl, and then today, and then, and then uh, tomorrow. So you can use it, but you have to refer because there are for sure copyright issues behind that. OK, but since the IEA is different, we don't classify the reactors like uh, seen in, uh, <laughs> so far. We have our classification, which is the current fleet, and then 
we divide the reactor in evolutionary reactor, which correspond more or less to the Gen 3 uh, uh, reactor, including also the so-called the Gen 3 plus, where their plus normally is there to signify that they are heavily based on passive safety system. And then in the future, we'll have the innovative uh, 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 reactor, which correspond to the generation four reactors. In between, uh, the small, medium, and modular uh, reactor, which may be of different uh, uh, types, uh, both uh, water-cooled reactor. Normally, the water-cooled reactor are IPWR. We will explain what is an IPWR tomorrow. But there are also other technologies, including a gas-cooled reactor and, and fast reactor. Everything, uh, I mean, put together also with the non-electrical application of uh, nuclear power, which can be, I mean, deployed even nowadays at some uh, temperature uh, regime, which means also not only produce electricity, but also, also why not hydrogen, also use it for seawater desalination, cogeneration, district and process heat, uh, uh, syn synthetic fuels and, and chemicals. In words, uh, what are the, the difference? Well, the current fleet, uh, as we know, is ma mainly composed by, uh, by commercial power plant, which were built uh, since the 1970s on the basis of the first generation, which was uh, the prototype, <coughs> and which are expected uh, to have a, an extension of life. They are still in operation, of course. We will see the number afterwards. And they are expected even to be operated in the next uh, decades. We will see how. And then we have the big category of the advanced nuclear reactor design, which are divided, as I said, in evolutionary uh, design, already, some of them already in operation under construction or under licensing, and then the innovative designs, the generation for reactors. Let me come back quickly on the question of the evolutionary uh, design. Here we say that they, uh, they have, they have, of course, they should have, uh, I mean, achieved a big in, uh, important improvement with respect to the existing uh, design. Um, uh, but they are heavily based on the, current, uh, on the current fleet because the technology is more or less the same. Let me come back to the question that was touched again by Janet in, this, in his first lecture, the competitiveness of nuclear power with respect to the other um, energy sources. Uh, nowadays, uh, even in an international context, uh, a lot of people, uh, I mean, emphasize the role of evolutionary reactors, so-called Gen 3 and Gen 3 plus, above all after Fukushima, because they say that they, <coughs> they have a safety features, safety performance, for instance, the core frequency damage, okay, Fam famous number, figure of merit, which is another way to classify reactors, which is much better of the second generation. Well, I'm old, and I remember the discussions that there was in the 90s on the real motivation, on the real driving factor to develop the Gen, Gen 3 reactors, like now there are some, or some, some reason to develop the fourth generation. The real reason was, uh, at least in, in, in the Western countries, okay, the real motivation was the liberalization of the energy market. The people of the nuclear community realized that in a, in a market in which you have really to compete, okay, in, in, a, in, in a liberalized market, well, we have to reduce the investment cost of the, of the, of the reactor, okay? which is the main fraction of the cost of the kilowatt hour of the electricity. Otherwise, we risk in a few years to be out of the, of the market. It's no more competitive. So the real triggering factor to develop the third generation actually was, like in the case of Gen 4 uh, React, to reduce the cost of investment of the, the reactor, and then, of course, also the LCO, uh, 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 et cetera, et cetera. In doing that, they had the, one, one of the criteria to reduce the, the, uh, the cost of the reactor was to simplify the reactor. It was possible to simplify the reactor because of the 
lesson learned from the operation of the of these two uh, 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 reactors. And in simplifying the reactor, then it came up also the question of the passive system. Because passive system actually is a simplification of the reactor. It's not a complication, it's a simplification. And the other point is, for instance, the reduction also of the components, even of the material. If you want to reduce the cost of a, of a reactor, you have to reduce the, 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 the kilogram per, per, per kilowatt. Eh? We are there. Okay? We have to reduce the, 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 kilo, the mass per, per, uh, per, per install uh, uh, capacity. And for instance, there are Gen 3 reactors which have, for instance, 60% less available than the Gen, Gen 2 reactors. So it was actually a combination, if you want, of this need to, I mean, simplify in order to uh, reduce the capital cost of the, the reactor. And in the meantime, in simplification also, I mean, uh, uh, helped in addressing safety issue, which was in particular, I mean, uh, um, uh, it comes even from the lesson learned from the Three Mile Island and, and Chernobyl. What else? What is the situation? Well, whatever you wanted to know about the current fleet, eh, because we are still at the, the level of the current fleet, uh, you can access this uh, database of the, of, uh, of the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is PRIS. PRIS is a, very, is a huge database which collects uh, data from all the nuclear power plants in operation in the, in the world. The data are up to date, I mean, almost in real time. And you can have, you can get from here any kind of statistic on the operation of the of the current uh, fleet. So the next uh, slides that they will show, and again there are some repetition with respect to, to the previous lecture. All the data come from 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 Pris. Sometimes they are not up to date to today, but you know, look at power is a is low going uh, technology. So the date of May are not very different to the current one. So there are four. 449 nuclear power plant in operation, better. Not in operation, but operable, okay? Because there is a case of Japan. So actually that uh, 449 include all the 50, there are 50 in Japan, reactor. Eh? And, and we, we know very well that only a few of them are really uh, uh, being restarted after Fukushima. They cover the 11% of the world electricity and the mere 5% of the primary, uh, primary energy consumption. But they pre represent the 30% of the low carbon electricity produced in the world. So it's true that uh, the percentage of the uh, overall electricity demand is not high, but it represents the 30% of the 30% of the low carbon and is base load energy. There are also 60 uh, reactors under construction, and two-thirds, as well known, is in Asia for the very well-known mechanism that we are going to present in a few slides. Uh, so the current fleet, uh, as well known, is uh, almost composed by water-cooled reactor. I mean, above all, PWR, but also significant fraction of BWR, uh, some 40, 50 pressurized heavy water reactor, still some... Uh, or BMK under, um, in operation, some gas food uh, reactors, for instance, the case of the uh, UK, and only two industrial size uh, fast breeder reactors. Even the situation concerning the reactor under, uh, under construction is not very different to the current fleet. Even in this case, as you can see, major of the reactor are pressurized with the reactor with a, even a smaller fraction of the other uh, 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 reactor. Um, of course, the situation, as usual, the, uh, the, 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 the world is not homogeneous, it's very heterogeneous. So the situation uh, of the, the, the current fleet and also the fleet in perspective, considering the 60 nuclear power plant un under construction, is very heterogeneous in, in, in the world. At the moment, most of these uh, uh, reactors are still, uh, I mean, of the, of the current uh, fleet uh, are, of course, in it. U.S. in North America, U.S. And, and Canada, and also in Europe. But the, if we start considering uh, the reactor under construction, we can easily see that uh, even in the near future, most probably Asia will take over in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, overall uh, electric capacity. 
nuclear electric uh, uh, capacities. Uh, well, we know that, uh, so most of, uh, anyway, at the moment, uh, the largest fleet is still in the US with 99 nuclear power plants, in France, 58, in Japan, 43, but only a few in operation, then Russia with 35, and China with 31, and all the, the rest. Oh, a very problem is the question of the current fleet, uh, how long we want to keep them uh, on, uh, 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 on. Well, the situation is pretty critical if you look at this uh, graph. Why? Because if we look at this graph, which is uh, the, you know, here, are, for instance, this one reactor has put into operation right now, okay? And then you go back on time, okay? And for instance, these are the reactors, which probably you cannot read, so I will read for you. These are the reactors, which have at least a 40 year of operation, okay? is a timeline back, okay? So six years of operation, 16 year operation, 23, uh, and then we have this reactor, okay? Which were put in operation some 40, 41, 42, 43, et cetera, et cetera, years ago, okay? If we sum up all these reactors in the world, there are 90. So there are 90 uh, reactors out of the 499 eh, that they, they, they are already beyond their life because they were licensed normally for 40 years. And actually, there are nuclear power plants in the, in the world which have already submitted their application for the license extension, and they, they got the license extension. But this is a general problem, which affects a very uh, large part of the, of, of the fleet, okay? And uh, so the, 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 one of the points, uh, which is a key point for the nuclear industry in this moment, is to take a decision for this nuclear power plant, if it's really worth uh, to continue operation or to definitely shut down according to their original life. Um, Slowly, slowly, of course, this mechanism will, will affect also, of course, in 20 years from now. You, you can imagine that in 20 years also all this part of the fleet will be affected by this problem. So in, next, in the next decades, let's, let's say near medium term, I would say that the nuclear, one of the, the, the two main points uh, uh, really, I mean, uh, with the, the implication of the nuclear sector, will be the life extension of the current uh, fleet, okay? and of course, as a consequence, also the decommissioning, because some nuclear operator will also decide uh, it's better to, to shut down the reactor and enter it into decommissioning instead of extend their, their life. So let's say that in coming years, there will be three main drivers okay, in the nuclear sector. The, 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 the construction of the Gen 3 reactor, okay, even with some, I mean, increasing performance with respect to the first uh, of a kind. The life extension of the current uh, fleet, and then the decommissioning, depending, of course, on the decision of the state and the operators regarding the current uh, uh, reactor. The, please, please. About what? Ah uh, no, they are they are affecting. Is proportional to the the, the, the to the uh, number of reactors of the different types that I showed you before. There are both uh, pressurized water reactor and boiling water reactor and also heavy water cooled reactor, which are under consideration for. I mean, the the, the operators. Uh, depending which kind of market we are talking about. Let's say that the operators, public or private, depending on the country, they are considering if it's worth uh, to extend their life or to shut down and enter to the commission. All the type of reactors, including, by the way, fast reactor, because there is a fast reactor, the M350 is under the commission. That's true, that's true. Yeah, but I mean, there are so many considerations that take place when you have to take this decision that is not only the type of reactor, it's the local uh, uh, situation, it's the, the, the price of a fossil fuel in your country. You know, there are the 
there are 1,000 different uh, factors. However, the decision has a big impact, okay, as you can see from this, uh, from this graph. Because if we, I mean, we take the whole fleet, okay, and we respect their original uh, uh, lifetime, uh, at the horizon of 2060, yeah, 2060, all the current fleet has to be shut down. Okay, it's a red curve. I don't know why sometimes it doesn't do. Okay, with my fingers. Okay. If we consider, if we if we don't have any life life extension beyond 40 years, the current fleet has to be completely shut down in 2065. If we extend up to 50 years, we have this green curve, which ended 20, 2070, more or less. And then there are also under consideration life extension of 60 years. Some town also dreams of 80 years. And with this, what does it mean? That, OK, we have already seen that in, num in a number of cases, the life has been extended beyond 40, 50, and in the future also 60 years. So if we sum this to the fact that we see now the first uh, evolutionary designs and three reactors and three in three plus reactor under construction and some of them under operation uh, if we sum up the question of light light uh, uh, long-term operation of the current fleet plus the then three reactors under design construction uh, licensing and operation we see that uh, the, the most realistic situation of nuclear power will be that in the second half of the of this century, we will have still a, a nuclear uh, power plant fleet composed of light water reactors, basically. Okay, with the first uh, then uh, then four reactors built maybe in this uh, coming decades, and then only in, I would say in the second part of the of the of the century they will slowly slowly replace. Uh, the current uh, fleet and the, and the Gen 3 uh, reactors. Please also consider that the Gen 3 reactors are designed for 60 years of, uh, of operation, not 40 like uh, the, the, the current fleet. And again, with even uh, someone dreaming to extend their life to 80 years in, in US, they are also considered one century. Okay. I, I, well, when we are uh, at the bar, we'll discuss this. I'm not a big supporter of this idea to go ahead with the technology which was a conceptualized one century ago. I don't think that is a good point for the, but this, this is not uh, from the IEA. I don't quote me, it's a personal, <laughs> very personal. Opinion. Okay, of course, in this lifetime, uh, LTO, long-term operation, there are challenges, okay? There are challenges which are uh, listed here. Again, it's like to, 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 uh, to uh, adopt a nuclear power plant. Behind, uh, there are policy and strategic issue and, and decision, okay? The, 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 there should be a clear commitment from the operator. But of course, eh, there are a lot of societal uh, implication even with the local community and so on and so forth. So there should be a strong policy, a strong uh, strategic uh, evaluation uh, 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 behind. Then, of course, uh, they require safety improvements, okay? Well, one is, is trivial, the lesson learned from Fukushima. Okay? They were designed and constructed and, and even a long, uh, for a long time operated well before Fukushima. So, of course, as you know, even the IA has promoted for five, six years a big, big project regarding the lesson learned of Fukushima and how to improve the safety performance, in particular of the current fleet. I would say that most of the, of the work performed in the, in, in the world and also at the agency regarding the current uh, fleet, including the so-called uh, stress test uh, in Europe or the equivalent uh, test performed in Russia or in the US and so on and so forth. Of course, uh, I mean, if we need uh, this uh, safety improvement, uh, there are financial aspects. Uh, because, for, for instance, in some cases, it, me it means also to replace very important components of the plant, including, I don't know, the steam generator. This is a, is, a, is a, the one of the basic uh, components of the of the, uh, of, the, of the of the of any nuclear power plant, and of course there are, I mean, important financial uh, implication 
Of course, there should be a correct aging management. You know the question of aging of the material. There's a very, there are a lot of science uh, in aging. I mean, people think that there is uh, nuclear science also, nuclear power science also in Gen 4 reactors. It's not true. There is a lot of work to do even on the, uh, uh, on the uh, study of material which uh, have been irradiated for 30, 40 years. And we have to demonstrate uh, that they can operate uh, safely also for other uh, 10, 20 uh, years. Configuration management is a very particular thing that is important. When we modify a, a reactor, it doesn't correspond anymore to the, to the design which was in the paper, eh? even heavily different from the one which was designed sometimes in the, in the 60s and in the 70s. So configuration management means that it's extremely important to update the documentation behind any kind of uh, long-term uh, operation, light extension of the, of the reactor. It's key in order then uh, to operate uh, the reactor uh, safely and in securely and, and so on and so forth. And of course, human resource management is always the same for any nuclear technology. As said, uh, uh, well, it's just to stress uh, again uh, that when we consider the current uh, uh, reactor under construction. Again, we are talking about the light water uh, reactor. So it's another graph to show that, uh, considering that uh, the reactors that we are building today are light water, basically light water uh, uh, reactor. Considering the fact that uh, there will be a lot of effort in the life, uh, in the long-term operation of the current fleet, in the decades ahead, uh, we'll have a nuclear power plant fleet in the world still composed of light water reactor. Is always a, because of the, 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 it's just a reminder of the, the, uh, the, uh, the title of the presentation, which is Evolution of Nuclear Power Technology. Uh, evolution, but at the end, the evolution, we are in terms of technologies, there is no big jump. It's not uh, a, a mobile, and it's not a, a mobile that you have in your pocket. The nuclear power plant. Uh, of course, okay, so this is the current situation and also in perspective on the basis of the, of the, of the uh, reactor and the construction. How about the projection, okay? Well, uh, there are projections even prepared by this lady uh, every year. Uh, and, and most probably you will show something, uh, I don't know, if not, okay? However, I mean, I'm not uh, very fond of the long-term projection because normally they failed miserably. I just uh, took the, the one at the 2020 and 2030, the numbers of the, from the International Atomic Energy Agency, but also other, the other agencies more or less have the same, uh, the same projection. Okay. So the situation here will also show the trend. Uh, well, the trend is not very exciting eh, because there is clearly a stagnation eh, uh, for various reasons. There was Chernobyl, now uh, uh, Fukushima, etc. And this is a projection of the nuclear power, which has been revised every year. And you can see here this uh, segment, which corresponds to the reduce in the projection. Why? Well, this is a fact of Fukushima. Okay? So before Fukushima, we were optimistic on the projection. Okay? And we had uh, this, this bad. And then every year, we reduce uh, both of the minimum value and also the, 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 the maximum value. The bottom line is that at the, at the horizon of 2030, the low projections say that there will be a mere 3% of increase of nuclear power plant in the world, with a high projection, I think, that is 56%. Okay? So the reality should be somehow in between, even if the rule of average doesn't, doesn't work in this case. Okay. Uh, of course, everything, I mean, I mean uh, taking into account that when we see that, that, that we uh, even, even in the case of the low projection, the 3%, okay, it means anyway a lot of new construction because in the meantime there will be some 100, 200 uh, reactor uh, under the commission, okay, shut down and that they have to be replaced. So when you say, ah, 3%, it means that, well, it means that even in terms of uh, economic value is already an interesting uh, market because anyway, if we want to, at least to, to keep the same fleet, uh, we have to replace uh, the, the, the reactor under uh, the commission. Of course, as usual, this, the, the world is not homogeneous. So we'll come back on this point several times. 
And as expected, okay, the situation will be stagnant in Western Europe and in, uh, in North America. This, this thing doesn't work anymore. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, stagnant in, in Western Europe and, uh, and uh, in America. Well, of course, as very well known, I mean, there will be a number, I mean, the, 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 the growth is expected above all in, in Middle East and South Asia and also in Far, in far East. Africa, we'll see. Okay, there are, I mean, in any case, of course, uh, at the horizon of 2050, 2060, there is not big uh, expectation in terms of growth in the other area of the of the world. Okay, so um, can you give me more or less the uh, the time frame? Because I think that is 15, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so it means. Uh, Pardon me? Cocktail time. Cocktail time. So please, <laughs> you have to serve the cocktail time. OK, since we have also the lecture on water cooled reactor current and evolution, I will skip this slide, which are even also obvious. And, and you know, they, they show the, the, the type of reactors that they are under construction, uh, sorry, uh, under operation uh, nowadays. Then we have talked about the evolutionary uh, reactors. We have already said what, they are, what are their main uh, feature with respect to the uh, current fleet. Let me add, I mean, again, I repeat myself, simplification, I mean, less learned and experience based on 16,000 years of operation of the current fleet. Uh, have a use of a passive system in particular, uh, uh, instead of active, in particular for the emergency heat removal system. Uh, the, the other, the other uh, advantage with respect to the current fleet is the fact that there is, I mean, most of them, they also foresee the use of uh, MOX fuel, which is interesting in order to stabilize the, uh, the inventory of uh, plutonium uh, using uh, MOX, sometimes in, at least in more recycling, of course, you reduce the stockpile of, of uh, uh, plutonium. You don't address uh, really the problem of the nuclear waste because actually, in, I mean, recycling in a light water reactor because of the cross section is also, I mean, increase for instance the amount of americium. But at least it is, it is important because you can uh, reduce the stockpile of plutonium with all the uh, security and uh, safeguard implication. Um, there is also, I mean, the other point is then normal. They have also, I mean. Again, regarding the performance of the fuel, they have a, a higher burnout of the fuel with respect to the current fleet. However, so the, the, this uh, reactor, as I said, uh, uh, this evolutionary reactor, there are already some of them in operation. Um, ah, yes. Uh, so ABWR, APR 1400 in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Republic of Korea, VVR 1200 in Russia. There are as well known two very cases under construction. They are in this moment uh, really uh, under consideration because of the implication from the economical and financial viewpoint in particular as for the uh, AP 1000 by Westinghouse. And there are other uh, concepts like the um, economic simplified boy world reactor from General Electric or the APWR or the Atmea one, which is another product, Areva Mitsubishi, still in the detailed design. And they will, and the, the, some of them, they already enter also the licensing uh, process. OK, the case of small modular uh, reactors. What we are talking about? Okay. Well, actually, when we use the acronym, which stands for SMR, according to the IEA definition, SMR means small, medium-sized, and modular reactor. Small and medium, the definition is very, is very simple. I mean, we consider small reactors the one with the power, electric power capacity up to 300 megawatt electrical, medium size up to 700 megawatt electrical. If we talk about a small modular uh, reactor, this is a particular case of small reactor. Again, 
with the, 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 the electric power up to 300 megawatts. But the main feature is, is that they are built in, in worship, in factories. And then they are transported as module to the, to the site as the demand arises. Okay? So the, 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 the concept uh, behind is that they are shop fabricated, which should reduce uh, the, the, uh, uh, dramatically even the time for uh, construction, or at least of the, of the uh, nuclear island can also sim simplify of the process of quality assurance because you can imagine that what you can do in terms of, uh, of uh, control in, in a worship with respect to what you can do in, a, in, in the site. So one of the, of the merits should be, I mean, one of the uh, big advantages should be to reduce the, the, construction, uh, uh, the construction time. And then since there are modules, modules of a, of a battery, okay? They are transported to the site only when there is a demand. Okay, so what the the, the, the advantage is not economic, is financial. Okay, why? Because I don't need if if I have to to, to build a, a large uh, nuclear power plant or I don't know fourteen hundred uh, megawatt electrical. Okay, and then small country. Well, maybe at the beginning I don't need all this uh, electrical power. Okay, but I have to pay, in particular the bank which gave me the money to start the, the construction for the whole reactor, okay? And from the financial risk, uh, this is a big issue, as we were very well know, okay? With this concept of modular, well, maybe we can do something. It means that I'm just going to, to, to build in the workshop only the reactors that I really need today. Not only that, I construct the, the, the reactor, in a shorter time than the big guy of 1,400 uh, uh, megawatt, and they put that reactor in operation. And when it's in operation, I get back of my investment. Okay, I don't have to wait the long lasting time to put a big guy in operation. I, I construct in, let's say, two three years a small module. I transport the module on, on the site, and they start operation, which means give back from my money that I have invested in the module. And only when I need in additional capacity, then I order a new module to the worship and so on and so forth. Okay, so even if, uh, of course, I cannot rely on the economy of scale, which is a classical way to address uh, the uh, the uh, uh, economy element in in large water uh, reactor by definition because it's, it's small. So it means that in terms of cost per kilowatt is most probably higher. It will be really a ch challenge to decrease, I mean, to have this cost comparable with large uh, reactor. But from the financial viewpoint, was, which was the big issue in all the liberalized energy market, they may represent a good uh, idea, okay? Of course, even over the time, we'll be able to address the, uh, the, uh, the economy, not in terms of scale, but in terms of numbers, then it may be that also the cost per kilowatt will be compact with a larger reactor. It's not possible to reach this goal with the economy of scale. We have to reach the goal with economy of numbers. Okay? Which means that SMR will be successful if and only if the, the, the world, the, 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 the industrial, uh, uh, the nuclear industrial community will be able to sell thousands of this model. This is the goal. Uh, not to, 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 to realize a few units like in the case of uh, large uh, reactors in, in nuclear chemical countries. Uh, we are talking about thousands of, of units. In particular, one of the idea is to replace uh, the aging uh, fossil fire units uh, in some part of the world, even in the US, but not only in the US, also in Europe. We have the problem that we have uh, aged uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, unit, uh, typically of two, three hundred uh, megawatt uh, electrical. So, in principle, SMR are good uh, to replace uh, this uh, uh, old uh, uh, coal plant, which, of course, pose a number of issues from the environmental viewpoint. The other point is that they are, since, since they are of small uh, size, uh, they are good uh, to be coupled with something else, so they are good for cogeneration. And since they are small, they don't require a very developed electrical grid. 
So they are also good for off-grid areas or remote areas in which the, the, there is not a very develop, developed uh, uh, electrical uh, grid. Since they are small, it is also possible to adopt some design, for instance, the integral type design that we will see uh, uh, tomorrow, which also increases the safety of the, of the reactor. Okay, we will see tomorrow how we can simply, again, simplify the reactor from the layout of viewpoint, which has, the, like, like for the case Gen, Gen 2, Gen 3, there are two uh, major uh, benefits. That simplification means a normally re uh, uh, reduction in the, in the, in the cost, okay? in, the, in the capital uh, uh, cost. And in the meantime, also enhance the safety features. And this is possible because they are uh, uh, small. It's not possible for technological reason and also for economic reason, for instance, uh, to, I mean, there are someone proposing integral uh, PWR also to large size, but in my view, it's very, very uh, challenging. Please. Uh, new companies. Having a small, it is the most uh, appropriate uh, option than other things as usual for any question regarding uh, nuclear the the, the 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 answer cannot be straight is not is not straightforward i cannot why because if i am a nuclear a newcomer countries of course i'm interested I, i'm i'm very concerned about the fact that to involve the country in a, in a, in a project of 10 billion euros, eh? because it's comparable to my GDP. Okay? So if I fail, there is a big impact uh, on my economy. Okay? So of course, uh, say, well, SMR could be really a good, uh, good point. Maybe I will pay a little bit uh, more per kilowatt, but I don't put at risk my economy. Okay? So in principle, it's a good idea. But if I am a newcomer countries, I'm also very well concerned about the operational experience. What is the operational experience with IPWR? Zero. So you say that you have to balance uh, uh, things, okay? So even with a newcomer country uh, uh, perspective, depending, okay, I have to evaluate not only that, I have to evaluate, for instance, what is uh, the impact on my local economy or the economy of the, of the country? adopting one technology instead of another. I have to say that from this point of view, the International Public Energy Agency, and in particular my section, has tried to help, in particular, the newcomer countries in evaluating pros and cons, which we have mentioned two, three elements, but there are 1,000 different elements to be taken into, into account, including human resources, the need of human resources. I need the more skill or more, more, more in numbers, uh, uh, nuclear resources per kilowatt. With an SMR or with a large water reactor, ah, this is still to be to be to be discussed. Even the question to have a single control room operating uh, different models, which was is another things which is claimed with better, still to be demonstrated that we are able to license a reactor and to convince uh, uh, regulators that we can operate uh, that I mean, several models, switch on and switch off. Why not uh, uh, coupling with the uh, renewables? with a, a single control room. So you see, there are a number of different uh, uh, factors to be taken in, into account. And unfortunately, there is not a single, uh, uh, single answer. And be aware of that. The other some years ago, developed a methodology, which is near-term technology assessment of the uh, reactor for near-term uh, deployment, which is a methodology which has been developed to try to take into account all the possible factors and to help a, look at, uh, uh, a newcomer countries to take a knowledgeable and intelligent, smart and knowledgeable decision on the basis of these different uh, uh, factors. Of course, what we can do is to address the issue from the technical uh, and economic viewpoint. We cannot address that from the political viewpoint. We know very, very well that above for newcomer countries, the decision to adopt the one reactor technology instead of the other, there are normally a lot of 
political reason uh, behind, in, in, including uh, the bilateral political, I mean, I mean uh, cooperation with other countries in the world. Okay? But from an IEA perspective, we have developed this methodology, first of all, to identify all the elements which should contribute to the decision and help uh, the newcomer countries, which is not so skilled and experienced in the, in the reactive technology, to select the, the technology which is not the best technology, but the technology which is most suitable for its own purpose. Okay? Even different countries may have a different best technology. It depends on your, on your needs. OK, well, 15 minutes, uh, please. Mm -hmm. Any, sorry? In the number, in the number of module or? or? Well, the te I, I, I have to say that um, I don't think that there is a, a limit, I mean, in principle. But the, 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 the trend is that uh, normally the battery should have, I mean, the, the, the final uh, battery should have a number of models which correspond in terms of overall power, electrical power, to a larger reactor. So it means instead of having one nuclear power plant of 14, 1500 uh, megawatt you have a seven, eight, ten, depending. Uh, I, I show at least this slide. Uh, I will come back on that. I think that I'm in the, in the light of tomorrow. Yes. Sorry. Um, it means that uh, there are SMR of very different uh, power capacity. There are at least the seven, eight categories. The one from 0 to 50 megawatt, from 50 to 100, 100. Uh, there are a number of different options. But the point remains always the same, that there are options and they are not proved because of the situation is this one. That we have only, I mean, if we consider the so-called IPWR that we will explain uh, uh, tomorrow, at the end we have only one IPWR uh, under construction, which is ARM25 in Argentina. Then we have a KLT4060 under construction in Russia Federation, but it's not a modular uh, uh, reactor. It's not even a land based uh, application. And then we have a gas cooled reactor, an interesting uh, case. An approach uh, is the first approach even to the for reactor, which is the HTR PM in China, which is not a, a like it is not a water cooled reactor, it's a gas cooled reactor. And here again, there is the question if uh, it's really credible that a newcomer countries start with a technology which is not very used in the world. Okay. It's another consideration. Maybe yes. Maybe if this reactor will perform in an exceptional basis and China will support these newcomer countries completely with their full I mean, experience and, uh, and skills, etc., why not? But of course, it's another challenge because we are talking about a, a, tech, a reactor technology which doesn't have the same operational experience as the current. Okay, so just to, ah, yes, I did, sorry, I put that I put only, it's this one, the, the, the slide that I want to show. So you see, even the number of modules uh, to reach uh, the, I don't know, 1,000 uh, figure of megawatt depends on which kind of uh, reactor we are talking about, okay? Because, uh, as you can see, the, 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 the design, the developers in this moment, uh, they, they propose a very different uh, module from a few megawatt uh, up to also 300 megawatt per, per month. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah. Before concluding, I, I will show two, uh, two three slides and promise we go to the cocktail. Uh, but without question, otherwise, we will tell you. Uh, I think that in the previous uh, lecture, there was a mention of the integration of uh, nuclear power plants with the video boat. Uh, in order to have the so-called hybrid uh, energy system, and what are uh, the uh, possible cause and cons, uh, benefits, of this. Uh, 
Well, this is a slide which show uh, a case of a hybrid energy system using SMR. Why SMR? Well, for because of the flexibility in, in itself. And with this flexibility, uh, which is need of course with intermittent, uh, uh, why flexibility? Because whenever you have renewables at the moment, okay, you know, storage uh, of the current technology, of the current generation, the problem is uh, fluctuation. Okay? So, and, and, and fluctuation is uh, when you talk about fluctuation, you, and, and the curve during uh, the this one. I'm oh, sorry, I, I'm just trying the IA, oh no, the ICTP device. Okay? But this is the fluctuation, uh, uh, intervals of six hours, eh? It's a sharp fluctuation. It's the blue curve, eh? When we talk about renewables, we talk about this fluctuation nowadays, unless, of course, they will develop uh, very high performance uh, uh, stories, etc., etc. So the, the, the need would be to compensate this fluctuation with the nuclear power plant, okay? And so, of course, to say, well, if you use a large uh, power plant, it's true that some large power plant were even operated in load power, but it's a problem because of the inertia of the, of the system. The nuclear power plant, you also, uh, to be very efficient and effective, you should uh, always uh, work at full power, okay? Constantly at full power. Of course, if you have a small guy, well, maybe you can do something in order to compensate that fluctuation because it's more flexible in itself. And there are two options, basically, that nowadays are, uh, are under investigation. Option one is the, the question to have multiple modules, okay? So overall, I, I need, I don't know, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, 700 megatalactical to compensate the, the renewables, okay? And I have seven modules. So depending on the, I mean, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the energy, the electricity generated, for instance, by this uh, wind, term, uh, wind termine uh, uh, fleet, okay? I will switch on and switch off my module. Okay? This is a way to compensate uh, the fluctuation of the renewables having a number of modules and switch on, switch off the different modules according, in order to compensate the fluctuation of the, of the wind farm. There is also another case in which I have only one medium reactor of 700 uh, megawatt, which is operated in load following, okay? So it's not always operated full power, but I, I modulate, I have, I have to modulate the, the output of this uh, uh, reactor. The, the, at least the theoretically, okay, the compensation in the two cases is the following. Can you see the red curve from even from the boat? Can you see? I, I showed that the, the blue curve is the fluctuation of the renewables, of the wind fan. Okay? Well, if I adopt the case of a 700 megawatt flexible, one unit to 700 megawatt, the result is the red curve. If I switch on and switch off, the result is the black curve, which is much better. Okay, of course, switching on, because also the 700 megawatt, I cannot, of course, operate from zero to 700. Eh? Forget for the thermal cycle and the, the, this inertia of the, of the system. Okay? So we can do something theoretically, because these are only calculations. So if it will be really possible to operate in a safe manner and according to the regulation, a fleet of the small model reactor in this way is still to demonstrate. But there is a room to do something, to integrate a, a, a nuclear power plant with, with the renewables. The only point is that uh, the nuclear community is not smarter than the other community. Yeah? So the same uh, uh, layout, the same scenario, the same consideration that are being done in the nuclear Field are also done, for instance, by the gas plant uh, community. I've seen the same, the same type of uh, of uh, layout, the same plant, but they can also do it. And of course, as well known, a gas plant is extremely flexible. I really switch on and switch off with the bottom, eh? which is not the case even with an SMR. Okay. So it's a big competition. It's not. Uh, 
of course, uh, we can say, well, if you if you adopt a gas uh, a gas react a gas plant, uh, you emit CO two, and this is not the case with uh, the Finally, it's really the last slide of that cocktail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, since uh, for each of these uh, uh, batch of slides, I have a lecture tomorrow. So of course we can can talk more tomorrow on the single technology. Okay, just to say that that uh, uh, we are talking about the generation four uh, react. When we talk about innovative reactors, we talk about generation four reactors, which I repeat myself are still under uh, development. And there are uh, this one, okay, under development, under design, there is still R&D to be, to be performed in order even to build the first uh, prototype. And uh, normally they are classified in this way. Well, actually, this is a, li a, li a little bit a limitation because uh, here you can see, maybe you have already seen this uh, slide many times. This is what this is like elaborated by the Generation 4 International Forum. Generation 4 International Forum is a group of countries which so under the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Department of Energy of the uh, United of States of America in 2000. They have uh, analyzed 130 different national out of this 130 uh, concept, uh, they say, well, the most promising for a reasonable, uh, let's say, meeting on the are these six concepts. It doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, there are also other innovative concepts, very, 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 uh, uh, even a big song. But these are the ones which have been selected by the Nation for the National Court, and there are, uh, which are under development since the 2000s. In the countries, we have a long term commitment of nuclear power, and so they are interested also to develop the reactor with nuclear power. And there are, there are three, three of them, at least the three of them, and there are also four, which are fast reactors, and the fast reactors, the solid food fast reactor, the light food fast reactor, and the gas food fast reactor. There, are, there is also the molten salt reactor. We have mentioned that we have a list of and initially the reactor which was considered here was a thermal reactor. Now there are also molten salt fast reactors under investigation with some particular molten salt is possible to have a quasi fast aspect of the light of the liquid nickel cooled uh, fast reactor. Uh, I have to mention because we will not have a lot of time to talk about molten salt reactors here, but I'm Option. There is a big structural one when we say molten salt reactor. It's a reactor in which also the fuel is molten. It's molten fuel and salt reactor. Also, the fuel is liquid in the liquid and circulated in the system. Nowadays, there are uh, uh, reactor, molten salt reactors that are, of course, uh, molten fuel reactors that they did a lot of development. Even if uh, one, reactor, one experimental reactor was operated. However, of course, if it complicates the significant also the association with the fuel cycle, so it's really an option for the, the future. And more realistic is the case in which the molten salt is used only as a coolant. It means that the fuel is solid, like the carbon reactor, and molten salt is used also as a coolant. And finally, we have the supercritical water cooled reactor, which is, let's say, a natural extension of the carbon, the light of the reactor, it's just a water cooled reactor with the water is operating above the critical point. Okay. Uh, and this is really the last uh, slide. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I insist on the point. Uh, I, I insist on the point of the challenges. They are they are the very interesting features of that as we will see uh, I to address uh, the sustainability okay. So, for instance, uh, they have a high operating uh, temperature, okay, even twice of them, the current uh, reactors. So the idea is also to reach the temperature, how to have a reactor that are interesting for many, many different uh, uh, industrial applications and for the high uh, production. Even to reach, uh, I mean, uh, 
uh, beyond the 1,000 degrees here, so you can have the speed of water and can have a high temperature of the degrees. Closing the fuel side with the price of our work. I mean, uh, relaxing at the end of the day, I going to be a requirement of the logical report. So, uh, to, to really facilitate uh, the, the management of the line, high level waste. They have another feature is that uh, they use advanced uh, fuel, not only the NOx, which are used also today in some light like, water reactor, but also mine like you know, based uh, uh, fuel. For instance, to burn the uh, as well, it's one of the most critical radars for the uh, management of the geological monster, and also way up the volume. And then also we have to address better than the current technology, the question of proliferation of the and physical protection. And the, uh, you know, there is this statement, it's the goal of the generation for, uh, forum in terms of uh, uh, PP and PR that uh, while in Italy we say Viva la Mamma. We also have to demonstrate that they are able to satisfy the better than the technology. However, there are main trade offs to develop and then deploy this reactor. Then there are advanced materials and fuels. But they want to use advanced materials and fuels, which withstand a very, high, very harsh, harsh environment at high temperature and the high level of, of radiation. It means that this material has to be developed, tested, and then purified. And this kind of, and this is normally on the critical path. It means so that to do that from scratch. For instance, for structural materials or even uh, more dynamic fuel, it requires even decades. At least with the current uh, regulation, the resources required to that the devices to be using in the power. So, no illusion. If we are really talking about the very uh, 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 innovative uh, system using a fully closed fuel cycle, that's what it requires decades. Um, there are a lot of uh, uncertainty also from the licensing part because it's not only the price of the And all these concepts require substantial R&D, and sometimes uh, one cannot jump immediately to prototype that we are discussing in the case of the past reactor. There is also the need to pass it through the experimental plan, the administration plan. We will do this in the field of experimental field operation of the experience. This way, it's in the case of the gas past reactor. Okay. Which is from the sustainable viewpoint is a is a perfect case because this gas can take the, really the very part the neutral spectrum and the part of this is the neutral spectrum is better you can have a permanent uh, uh, much major and minor uh, acting and with gas you can also reach a high temperature but unfortunately there is a new operation. Of uh, uh, the experimental plan. It means it will be a lot of time before success. And last but not least, most of them are operating in the full flows of the cycle, which is still in the industrial